Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here today, and you should be too. And today, we've got this here thingy. Yes, this here big old something or other. And, well, my cousin messaged me the other day, and he goes, Hey, I got this rock I found. Could you cut it open and see what's inside? And I'm like, well, yeah, duh. And I, I mentioned my cousin before, He's he gave me a couple other rocks to mess with. And after I got the message from him the other day, I realized that now he's in the rocks. Oh yeah, you, you are one of us now. But anyway, let's take a better look at this rock. He said he found it under a building that they were, they were building or moving. Or something like that. I can't quite remember what it was. Sorry about that, dude. But it is very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. It's got a... It's Well, first of all, it's almost a half a pound. Okay. And it's not that big. And it's relatively heavy. And we've got this vein that seems to run the whole way through. And I believe it's quartz. I don't think it's calcite. Yeah, it's probably some type of quartz material because I can't really scratch it. Of course, I just did right there. Yeah, it seems like a little bit harder than calcite. But this material here is also, you know, pretty tough. So we're hoping that it might be like a some type of crystal geode or something like that. But I am not, I'm not in any way certain. But another interesting thing is we've got what appears to be pyrite or mica or something here. It seems, I think it might be mica. There's like two spots with it there. And that's about all we know. Other than we're going to cut it in half and see what it looks like inside. Um, and it's not magnetic because I checked that. I don't know why I didn't check it. Now, I just checked it before. I should have done that for one the video, but I'm not the brightest bulb in the chandelier sometimes. But anyway, it, it looks like it may be some kind of conglomerate material. But, you know, we got this brown color here, and then this beige color, and the crystals. I guess the only way we're going to find out is if we actually put that on the saw and cut the stinking thing. So, like I said, we got this vein that runs the whole way across. So, I'm, we got a fairly flat side here. I'm just going to take and run it right down the center. Just like that. And once we do that, then we can see what's going on. What we do after that, I don't know. So, let's take this over to the saw. So, to the saw! Okay, here we are on the saw. So I have the volume or the microphone off because this could be loud. So let's see what we've got. This could take a while. Alrighty, it's cut. Let's take it over and see what it is. Okay, I haven't looked at it yet. I just brought it over here, laid it on this. So we can take a look. Alright, so let's see what we've got in here. And... 
wow. It's, wow, it's kind of cool. Don't know what exactly we'd call that. It's not a, a geode, so to say. There looks like there's a something in the center there. But we definitely do have a crystal vein or a quartz vein running through there. And whatever this other material is, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty hard. It was hard when I was cutting it. It was throwing some sparks out. Hmm, but no, not a geode, not a crystal. Maybe it's a concretion or a conglomerate rock. If anybody knows, you know, put something in the comments there. But I think it's definitely worth doing something with. So I think we'll take, might just leave this side as it is, and we'll take this side. And I think what we're going to do is smooth it up and flat polish it. Because that's what we do. So. I'm going to make this a little bit sloppy here. Take the spray bottle of Destiny, which is not working real well. Let's take this flat lap here. And we're just going to do this by hand, because, because we can. Now, depending on how tough this is, because this rock does seem pretty, uh, pretty darn, darn tough. All right, let's see, are we getting anywhere? Yes, we're getting there. Okay, that's down. We got a nice little lip right there that we really got to get down on. And it's not raising much of a slurry. I think I need a more aggressive wheel to start with. So, let's get that. Okay, here's the 80 grit. That might be a bit too aggressive. Ooh, yeah, it's going to be aggressive and loud. It might just be what we need. Okay, I'm sort of working, pushing more on this edge here that, you know, that's got a little bit of pump on it. And you see, we're tearing pieces of it off, which is not really good. See, are we getting down? Well, actually, we're getting that flattened out. Okay, let's do this. You know what I'm doing. See if we can get this nice and flat. Okay. Ooh. Well, they'd be scratching the crap out of it, but... Well, okay, we got a little bit of a low spot there, a little bit of a low spot there, but we seem to have it getting pretty flat. Okay, let's remark it. Water, water, water. I could pull the hand crank machine up and do this, but why do that when we can do it by hand? Because if someone found a rock like this at home and maybe cut it off, cut it in half with a circular saw and diamond blade, you could finish it off yourself with some sandpaper. And using the same technique as that. Okay. Oh, that is flat. The pencil marks are all gone. Might be a slight bit one there. But I think we can deal with that. And now we're going to come back to this one. Might be a little bit too fine. Oh yeah, it's really fine. Oh look at that, I'm just tearing off all the paper in the center. I think we want to get rid of that anyway. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, let's see what we got. Oh. Yeah, this this wheel was really worn down. But we are raising a bit of a slurry on there. I'm going to work that across there a couple of times. I've got another paper towel here. And we are going to do this again. We're going to give it the old pencil-y line thingy thingy. And see what we got. Oh, well, obviously we are very flat because the pencil lines are all gone. There's a big divot right there. I don't think that's going to cause any real issue. So it's starting to pull up a slight bit of a polish. You see some scratches across there. Yeah, you can see some scratches. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to pull out some sandpaper. Clean up all this goo raw mess. And we're going to get some 1200 grit sandpaper and continue with this. So don't go away. Okay, you get yourself some 1200 grit sandpaper and a nice flat board. You'll have all you need. So if we look at that, you know, we do got some scratches on there. But the 1200 grit is going to take care of that. Okay, and basically all we're talking now is time and patience. It's on there. Oh. So we make it wet. And we start working it across the sandpaper. And I like to work in lots of different directions. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. And we're going to work out all of those scratches. And I'm going to get a different paper towel. You don't want to use a paper towel that you use like a rougher sandpaper one to wipe it off when you're up to a finer grit because you don't want to contaminate your work. Okay, that's drying off. Hmm, that's looking pretty good. I don't know if we need too much water, but I'm putting a little bit fresh water on it anyway. And back, back to the polishing. Mm -hmm. This could take a while. Okay, it doesn't hurt to wipe down your sandpaper now and again either. You can see we're actually wearing through the sandpaper. There's probably high spots on the board. A nice little flat piece of metal would work better than you won't have any high spots that you have this issue with. But generally speaking, a nice flat board will do what you need done. And just work it across the paper. I like to use quarter sheets. Because you can get done with a quarter sheet, basically. Basically, whatever you're doing, you should be able to get by with a quarter sheet of, sand, of the wet-dry sandpaper. If you use a whole big sheet, you end up using the whole big sheet. And then you uh, sort of wasted it. When you can get past with a quarter sheet, you know, that's four times as much use. As you can get out of one sheet of paper. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's actually pulling up a fairly good, fairly good look. Dry it off completely. And... Wow, yeah, that's not bad. I think what I'm gonna do is just hit this again. And at that point, I'm gonna take it over to the wheel of Zam. And put a finished polish on it. 
but I will be cleaning it off really well before I do that because you don't want to contaminate your final your final polish okay I believe that's probably about as good as you're going to get it which I think is pretty good see we're starting to see reflection in that which is exactly what we want Alrighty, so I am going to clean this stone off really well. Take it over to the wheel exam, and we will be back and see how it looks. See how it becomes the best version of itself. Okay? Okay, we're back from the wheel exam. And here is what we got. Whatever this is, you know, it polished up pretty darn nice it is not what you call your super duper polish the uh, quartz or whatever it is there's a lot of undercutting in it along with the m other multi-materials that's in there and sometimes you get that when you got a lot of materials of different hardnesses but overall you know here's the unpolished and here is the polished here is the outside, and here is the other outside. I think for something you found underneath a building, that's not too darn bad. So, I think I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this stone is a win. So, if you like the video, hit the button up there, subscribe, ring the bell, keep watching, and I will try to keep, keep more videos coming, I'm trying to do more interesting things. And like I said before, i starting another business, so I'm getting spread pretty thin here. So thanks for spending some time with me, and have a good evening.